Right now at noon, jury selection in the first Trump criminal trial gets underway. Why legal experts say this piece is so important. Plus, the DNR is asking people to hold off on outdoor burnings. We'll take a look at current fire danger conditions in the state. Thank you all for joining us. This is News 3 Now at Noon. I'm Jalen Banks. The first ever criminal trial for, former pres for a former president gets underway with jury selection this morning in New York. Donald Trump is charged with trying to illegally cover up alleged affairs, including with an adult film star. He strongly denies breaking any laws. Jared Hill reports from the courthouse in Lower Manhattan. Former President Donald Trump arrived as jury selection gets underway in the first of four criminal trials he faces. This is an assault on America. Trump, who's currently running for president, claims the entire proceeding is politically motivated. And it's a country that's failing. It's a country that's run by an incompetent man who's very much involved in this case. This is really an attack on a political opponent. That's all it is. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, accused of scheming to funnel payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels to cover up an alleged affair when he was running for president in 2016. We cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. Trump is required to be in court every day, and jury selection alone could take two weeks as both sides look for impartial jurors. This is going to be a difficult task because there is virtually no one who has no opinion about Donald Trump. Give me Trump or give me death. Outside of court, demonstrators for and against Trump are making their voices heard. Trump is not above the law. The trial is likely to run through early June. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. As the proceedings got underway this morning, the judge said he would not recuse himself from the case as Trump's defense had requested or addressed the matter any further. Well, it's another beautiful day of weather just before the storms roll in tomorrow. Meteorologist Kelly Slifka has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. Kelly, first off, how does it feel out there? Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Another beautiful day. Maybe not the 80s like we saw yesterday, but we're likely to be hitting the 70s today. So just another gorgeous day. The uh, beautiful weather we had this weekend is going to continue. You can see we do have plenty of sunshine. You may see a few high, thin cirrus clouds stream in during the afternoon hours, but that should be about it as we go through this afternoon. So looking at some really beautiful conditions on this Monday. Hardly any clouds to be found. You can see just a few uh, scattered clouds off to the west. Some of those may stream into southern Wisconsin as we go through this afternoon, but otherwise mostly sunny and another beautiful day today. But stormy weather will be moving in later tomorrow afternoon. It looks like we've kind of shifted this a little bit further toward the late afternoon and evening. And then it will be turning cooler by the end of the week. So enjoy today's beautiful mild temperatures. We're already in the upper 60s for many locations. So Madison sitting at 67, Middleton already at 68. So we'll watch these temperatures around 70, low 70s this afternoon. May actually hit the mid 70s down toward the Illinois border this afternoon with the sunshine should be just about perfect. But things are going to shift tomorrow. We've got a storm system developing off to our west. Right now, it looks like the severe weather threat is primarily going to be staying to the south, but that's a slight risk of severe weather on a scale of one to five, category two down to the south in the yellow, just south of Madison from uh, Janesville to over toward Monroe and also Platteville. That'll be going into tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. 67 right now, expecting temperatures in the lower 70s today. A beautiful day. We'll talk more about that severe weather potential. Not only that, but some heavy rain as well. We'll have more coming up in 15 minutes. All right. Well, sounds good. Thank you, Kelly. We'll see you then. Right now, the entire state of Wisconsin is at some risk of fire danger. All of southern Wisconsin is under high fire danger. That's in yellow. Much of the state is under a very high fire danger. That's in orange. Only two counties in Wisconsin are under a moderate risk. None have a low risk. In light of this, the DNR is extending its precautions from the weekend and asking you to avoid all outdoor burning. Yesterday, the DNR suspended burn permits in 41 counties. On Saturday, 37 fires burned more than 300 acres. That's the single most active wildfire day so far this year. Right now, the DNR says outdoor recreators should be extra careful with off-road vehicles or other equipment that has the potential to create sparks. And here are a few specific safety tips from them. Again, avoid all outdoor burning until fire danger conditions improve. If you're using any heavy equipment like lawnmowers or chainsaws, do that early in the morning or late in the day. You should also secure dragging trailer chains and, of course, report fires early and call 911 as soon as you see one break out.
Governor Evers is declaring this week as Work Zone Awareness Week in Wisconsin. It marks the start of construction season and promotes road safety work conditions. According to the Wisconsin DOT, more than 2,100 crashes were recorded in Wisconsin work zones last year, resulting in nine deaths and more than 700 injuries. Speeding, tailgating, and distracted driving are listed as common factors in work zone accidents. And do you have any questions or concerns about your plants or garden? Well, if you do, send us your questions via email to tips at channel3000.com. Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company joins us later in the show with the answers. Again, that's tips at channel3000.com. And still ahead this afternoon, move on over Apple. There's now another company on top of the smartphone making business. Plus how some companies are giving taxpayers a break from today's deadline. <laughs> Won't you? Yeah. I want fresh air. Uh, hun. You need the experts. The home renewal experts at Belco will make your project a breeze with free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for six years. Free installation won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Belco. Thousands of our heroes face the difficult choice between keeping their heat and power on or facing homelessness. 21,000 Wisconsin veterans are living below the poverty line, many impacted by physical or mental health challenges. Wisconsin loses three veterans to suicide every week. Together, our mission is to provide all struggling Wisconsin veterans with a critical survival safety net that keeps them safely in their homes. You can make a real difference by providing a donation to the Wisconsin Heat and Housing for Heroes Initiative. With 95 cents of every dollar donated, going directly to those right here in your community. Help by visiting www.heatforheroes.org or by calling 1-800-891-9276. That's 800-891-9276. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We did the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $200 at Walmart, over $300 at Lens Crafters, and over $200 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. With the best service, quality, and prices, Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. To help you remember, I made this cheer. V value, A awesome value, L lots of value, U. Get two pairs of free eye exam and anti-glare lenses for only $79. We've all seen what's happening at our border. President Biden and Senator Baldwin's open border policy has brought more than 10 million illegal immigrants into our country. That's double the population of Wisconsin. Our country was already struggling to provide housing and health care to our citizens. And tragically, we're losing over 100,000 Americans a year to the drugs that pour over our open border. Their policy is wrong. I'm Eric Covdy. I approve this message, and I'll work to fix this problem. When you pull up to someone's house, the first thing you see nowadays is their garage door. Let Precision's experienced designers come to your home and help you select the perfect door for your house. Precision is there to help. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. Samsung has knocked Apple out of the top spot for smartphone makers for now. According to research firm IDC, the company's report shows that smartphone shipments rose nearly 8% the first quarter of 2024, with Samsung taking over 20% of that share. Meanwhile, Apple shipments dropped 10%. Several companies are offering taxpayers a break to mark today's deadline to file income taxes. Krispy Kreme customers who buy a dozen original glazed donuts can get a second dozen for just the price of their state sales tax. California Pizza Kitchen is offering diners $10 off of a $40 purchase. And Grubhub is offering the first 1,000 customers who use the code TAXBREAK $15 off deliveries totaling $25 or more. 
And the film Civil War about a fictional conflict in a dystopian U.S. claimed the top spot at the domestic box office over the weekend, raking in more than $25 million. The teaming up of two mythical monsters in Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, dropped to number two in its third weekend with more than $15 million in North America, while Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the sequel to the latest reboot of the franchise, grabbed the third spot with just over $5 million. That's your CBS. CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Carissa Lawson. At the noon hour, we have the Dow Jones is up 26.45 and the Nasdaq is up six is up 73 or down 73.7 points and the S&P 500 is down 10.16. But up next, Pam is watching today's ag prices, and we're tracking your first one forecast. And later on Live at 4, strike up the band, a preview of the University of Wisconsin Varsity Band Spring Concert with director Corey Pompey. Get an 11% rebate on everything now at Menards. Come check out our new selection of ceiling fans. Find your style and add elegance to any room with Patriot Lighting. Get the Eastley ceiling fan for $79.99 after rebate. Ceiling fans help you save on energy costs year-round while making your space cool and more comfortable. Right now, this Hunter low-profile ceiling fan is $79.99 after 11% rebate at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Are you suffering with neck pain, back pain, or sciatica due to disc-related conditions? You may have tried drugs, spinal injections, or physical therapy just to find out it didn't help. You're not alone. The problem is that some of those treatments focus on symptom relief, but may not address the underlying disc problem. As a result of injury or overuse, the discs may bulge, herniate, or degenerate over time. Our therapies are highly successful and reduce pain associated with those conditions and may help you avoid neck or back surgery. At Midwest Spine and Nerve Center, we'll design a treatment program using the latest in pain relieving therapies, including non-surgical spine decompression, Pro Adjuster 360 computerized technology, laser therapy, and more. Visit our website or call to schedule a complimentary consultation. Kevin? I bought the team. I put it on my Chase Freedom Unlimited card. And I'm a cash back on a few other things, too. Started with the sound system. Gary from deep. That's cash. I prefer the old intro. This is what's better. I don't think so. Steph, one more thing. The team owner gets five minutes a game. Cash bros? Woo! I like it. I break it to clay. Cash back like a pro with Chase Freedom Unlimited. How do you cash back? Chase, make more of what's yours. The Jennifer Hudson Show. Fellas, and like, hey, I mean Garcia. <laughs> Nikki and Brie Garcia prove how powerful they really are. How you like the adjustment? It's been really empowering. Plus, find your power in financial freedom. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. Wednesday at 10, a massive renovation project creates chaos for residents of an affordable housing complex in Beloit. Last month, I showed you their concerns. Now others are speaking out. I'm going back to the top for answers. Wednesday at 10. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back at noon. Let's check in now with Pam Yaki from the Midwest Farm Report. Pam, how are you and what can you tell us today? Jalen, I'll tell you what, on a day like this with this kind of weather, how can you be anything but great? And I know it's coming to an end, so I'm going to try to suck it all up yet this afternoon. And that's kind of the theme that I've got for you on the noon show today, trying to grab every ounce of energy left. That's what Ashley Hagnow, our current Alice in Dairyland, is doing. We're less than a month away from selecting our next Alice in Dairyland. That's going to happen up in Door County the first week of May. But in the meantime, Ashley is loving every minute being with the winner, the contender for the position to be our next agriculture ambassador. But it is bittersweet now this year because I know that my experience as Alice in Dairyland this year is almost coming to a close. But there's a lot of excitement on my end too for these amazing group of young women to undergo this experience towards learning more about Wisconsin agriculture and becoming Alice in Dairyland. 
Ashley Hagano, a Columbia County native who is our current agriculture ambassador, is Alice in Dairyland. Now, there are six finalists that want to take over that responsibility. And like I said, during the first few days of May, they'll all be going through the final phase of interviews up in Door County. The finale will be on uh, Saturday, May 4th. That's going to be in Sturgeon Bay. Find all the details you need at AliceInDairyland.com. This uh, past weekend, hopefully you were one of the throngs that had a chance to enjoy the kickoff of the Dane County Farmers Market on the Capitals. Square, Jamie, Jamie Bugle, who is the market manager, said they've got 220 vendors again this year. It's just like the Packers season ticket list to be a part of the farmer's market. They have a list you're generally sitting on for two years before a space becomes available to be part of the Dane County farmer's market. She said that's quite an improvement. Previously, that wait list would go as long as 10 years for a vendor to be involved. She also suggested people check back often because as the growing season unfolds, you'll see different farmer vendors that show up on the Capitol Square, kind of a cooperative uh, adventure for those farmers. They share space with others. When somebody's got a spring crop ready to go, they're there. And as the fall crops come on, the other faces show up. Great event. Well, today in Chicago, the barrel cheese unchanged at 157 and a quarter. 40 pound black cheese up three and a quarter at 156 and three quarters. Double A butter also unchanged today, 292 a pound. So there you go, Jalen. Uh, just another beautiful day in Wisconsin. But like I said, I know it's going to change. So everybody enjoy it while we've got it. Absolutely. And speaking of that, let's get a look at your certified most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kelly Slifka. Kelly, as Pam just mentioned, it's a beautiful day, but some potential changes on the way, huh? Yeah, it looks like, you know, the uh, beautiful weather we had this weekend, obviously yesterday, you know, we got the low 80s. I don't think we'll be quite that high today, but it's going to be hitting the uh, 70s today, and then we got plenty of sunshine. That's what we've seen. Unfortunately, it's been dry as well, especially areas to north. This is the long ongoing drought that we had from last summer. Yeah, we saw pretty good rains here in Madison down toward Janesville in southern Wisconsin, but some areas up there in Sauk County, Richland County have not seen a whole lot of rain and they still need that moisture. The good news is we do have quite a bit of rain in our forecast with the storm system coming tomorrow could come at a, a cost of potentially of some severe weather. I don't expect a widespread severe weather outbreak around here. That's going to be staying well to our south into Iowa and Illinois. Uh, that'll be tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, and then it will be turning cooler as we go into the later part of the week and next weekend with highs generally in the lower 50s. A lot of sunshine today, though, as temperatures climb in the lower 70s, may actually hit the mid-70s down toward Janesville, toward the Illinois border this afternoon. Just a beautiful afternoon. Plenty of sunshine, just a few high wispy clouds streaming through. And even if you are headed out after dark, still pretty mild. Temperatures still in the 60s up until about 9, 10 o'clock tonight. Here's the storm system still taking a shape and is starting to organize now that it's moved out of the Rockies, starting to move into the plains. They are expecting some severe weather across parts of Nebraska and Kansas. That's the focus of this uh, system right now in that warm sector. You can see south of that warm front. That's where they're likely to see quite a bit of severe weather breaking out today. That's why they do have an enhanced risk of severe weather. That's on a scale of one to five, a category three. So we're uh, not expecting any kind of weather until tomorrow afternoon. And even the, the, the enhanced risk will be staying down north south into Iowa and parts of Illinois and uh, Missouri. However, that yellow shading, that would be the slight risk. Uh, just uh, creeping into southern Wisconsin for Platteville over toward Monroe and Janesville. That's just south of Madison. Uh, so that's where the, the best risk, if you will, uh, for the potential of seeing some isolated storms producing hail and also some damaging winds. 71 expected today. That's way above our average, which now is 57. And the sun does not set until 741. Plenty of opportunity to enjoy that sun today. Uh, but we do have that first warrant alert day tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. That's uh, the best threat for seeing some of that severe weather creeping into southern Wisconsin. Possible hail, some damaging winds. You can't rule out an isolated tornado, especially once you get very close to that warm front. That'll be later tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. And then everything should start to wind down by Wednesday, at least the severe weather threat. So watch that on our future track. I think tomorrow morning, generally quiet. There might be a shower toward the uh, Mississippi River. But as we get in the late afternoon hours, especially here in Madison, say toward the rush hour, toward the dinner hour in the evening, that's when I think we'll see most of the activity. And not only the severe weather potential, but the entire state is really going to get soaked with some heavier rains. Now, the severe weather threat will end tomorrow evening, but we still have some shower chances even into a Wednesday as the storm system just, storm system just spins over northern Wisconsin, and we'll see some uh, residual showers on Wednesday. Now, this is what we can expect. You notice a lot, a wide swath of one to as much as three inches of rain with this system, so all of the state is expected to see some heavy rains, maybe some excessive rains for some. Right
Right now it's uh, 67 in Madison, 66 uh, down to the south in Janesville, so a mild afternoon already getting uh, up close to 70, and I think we'll have no problem getting into the lower half of the 70s today. First one forecast 71, just a beautiful afternoon for it. Yeah, to get outside and enjoy it before some of the clouds roll in tomorrow morning. That rain threat holds off primarily till the afternoon hours, mainly the late afternoon and evening. That's why we have the first warm alert day. Still some residual showers, maybe a thunderstorm Wednesday. Another chance of some showers with a stronger cold front that knocks our temperatures down a little bit going into the weekend. All right, well, sounds good, Kelly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Up next, Howard's in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen with a recipe that he says will leave you feeling like a billion bucks. It's April 15th. And that means it's tax day. And whether you got your taxes done weeks ago or you're going to be scrambling to get them done by midnight, we have a little something for you that's so good, it'll make you feel like a billion bucks. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All we do is place a package of shortbread cookies in a food processor and pulse it until they're finally crushed. To that, we add some melted butter. And after that's mixed, we pour it into a baking dish and pat it down to make a crust. While this firms up in the fridge, we combine a package of caramels with some heavy cream and heat this until it's smooth. Once it is, we pour it over the crust and sort of smear it so it levels off before popping it back in the fridge to set up. On top of this, we'll go a layer of chocolate chips that we melted with a little vegetable shortening. After that chills for a bit, cut it and get ready for a homemade candy bar that's worth its weight in gold. So whether your taxes are done or not, my suggestion is you go online and get the recipe for what we call billionaire bars. So you can indulge in something that will make you feel like a billion bucks. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a richer way and a less taxing way mm. for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm, it's good. And ahead at noon, Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is here answering your plant and garden questions. Email those questions to tips at channel2000.com. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. If you're about to replace your roof, stop. There's a solution about 80% less expensive. Nine out of 10 roofs can be saved by RoofMax. Guaranteed to extend the life of your current roof by five to 15 years at a fraction of the cost of a new roof. RoofMax's deep penetrating power restores flexibility and water protection. Nobody wants to replace their roof. Restore it instead with RoofMax for 80% less. Call now for a free roof inspection. Do you have both Medicare and Medicaid? If so, you may qualify for a dual eligible special needs plan from Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield with benefits and coverage for dental services or routine eye exams. Call now to explore plan options available in your zip code. Learn about the additional care, resources, and support you could have with an Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual special needs plan. Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual eligible special needs plans offer more benefits than you have access to with original Medicare alone. Additional benefits could help you save out-of-pocket costs. These benefits could include a healthy grocery allowance each month, transportation to plan approved medical appointments, or an annual allowance to spend on eyewear. Most of the Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual special needs plans have $0 monthly premiums, $0 copays, or $0 deductibles that can also help you save on out-of-pocket costs. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, don't miss your chance to enroll in a dual special needs plan. Call today to see what plans with additional benefits may be available in your zip code. Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield dual special needs plans offer more than original Medicare, like annual allowances towards dental, vision, or hearing coverage. These plans offer even more benefits that may provide you with additional care and support. With a 24-7 nurse line, you could have access to a registered nurse to help answer your questions whenever you need. If you're in immediate need of a caregiver or emergency services, these Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield plans provide a personal emergency response system. Contact a caregiver or emergency services at the touch of a button. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, don't miss your chance to enroll in a plan with more benefits than you may have with original Medicare alone. Call today to speak with a licensed agent and explore 2024 dual eligible special needs plans. The call is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 800-357-1385. 800-357-1385. That's 800-357-1385. Call now.
Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is back in studio with us answering your plant and garden questions. As always, email them the tips at channel3000.com. Lisa, again, thank you for joining oh, us. Oh, thank you. All right, let's see what we got here. So Stacy wants to know, is it okay to trim oak trees now? Okay, Stacy. normally we say that you shouldn't trim oak trees between April 1st and October 31st. And since we are solidly in April and we're way ahead of growing degree days, I'm going to say unless there is an emergency, like you have a branch that's breaking, I would leave your oak trees alone until they're dormant again in late fall or early winter. And Jen asked us, uh, I planted a delphinium tree three years ago. It was beautiful the first year and then the next two years it did bloom, but not as well. This year it did not come up at all. Do you have any ideas as to how she can, you know, get her delphinium tree yeah. up and going again? So delphiniums are kind of fussy about the spot. So you put them in and they do really well for a couple of years and then either they thrive after that or they don't. And so they're beautiful, but if you have a spot where they didn't thrive, then I would say find another spot. Basically, they like a lot of sun, but they also like the areas where they're planted to be a little bit sheltered. So perhaps you're just gonna have to find another spot in your yard and try again. And from Donna, can you transplant hydroponics to an outdoor garden? Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't see any reason why not. Um, I'd make sure that you use a rooting hormone or a, a root stimulator in there before you plant them in. And depending on what it is, it is still early April. So make sure that you have a plan to protect things if the weather, if the temperatures drop, uh, I'd say below 35. Mm -hmm. And from Debbie, she says that she would like to trim uh, her own rose from a Sharon down a bit, about 12 inches. It's all, is it all right to trim those down now or when can she do this? Sure, Rose of Sharon is a shrub from the hibiscus family. It's hardy here and it blooms on new growth, which means it's gonna set its flower buds on this year's growth. So trimming it down now is not gonna compromise the flowering at all. I would wait though until you start to see buds greening up because Rows of Sharon do tend to have some dieback during the winter and you'll wanna just prune back that dieback. And from Janin, she says, my fall flowering asters grow well, but not, but many do not stand upright. I have used tomato cages to prop some up, but rain and wind push the others down. Any advice? I love peonies and my peonies always split. And so what I like to use instead of peony hoops are these things that are called grow through hoops. And it's round and green and it's got like a big grid in it and then legs. So you can start it down really low when the plant is first coming up and then raise it as the plant gets taller. And it's a really good structure. They last way longer than peony hoops. A Little bit more expensive, but I've had some of mine for 10 years plus. Mm -hmm. So they last a really long time. And one last one, Karen from Verona wants to know if there are any special ground preparations for native flower seeds other than spreading some fresh dirt that need to happen before spreading the other seeds? The only thing I would look at is if your um, seeds need to be scarified, which is they need to, um, you need to do something that mim mimics them being through an animal's in, uh, digestible tract. So if that's the case, just give them a little nick with a, like a, a a kitchen file or a rasp and that should get going. Others like to have a little soak in water before you sow them. That information should be on the seed packets. All right, well, sounds good, thank you. Well, today's a beautiful day if you wanna go outside and start planting yourself with a final check of your first one forecast. Here's Kelly Slifka. Yeah, Kelly. beautiful today, but uh, don't get used to it. We do have some changes coming our way. I think when you wake up tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be dry, but we will see those clouds roll on in. This is tomorrow morning. Not until the late afternoon with these showers and storms rolling on in. Could see some heavier downpours and maybe some stronger storms as well. So we do have the first warning alert day for that potential of some severe weather tomorrow afternoon evening. More rain for Wednesday and Thursday, cooling down a little bit toward the end of the week into the weekend. Highs in the low 50s. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you back here for Live at 4.